let's circle back. You were talking about reinventing the wheel earlier. Yes. Yes. What What did you mean by that? Uh, so what I mean with that is that uh, it, it's not such a thing as you have to pay your dues, but but there are no shortcuts in life. If you want to get good at something, you have to put in the time, the effort, and the attention to get good at it. So, so I, I have I have thought about this for a really long time, right? You have some people that that play guitar for three years and they sound like a virtuoso. You have some people that that have been writing code for five years and and they seem like like a programming god almost. And then you have people that that played guitar for fifty years and or forty years and you hear them, you go like, ooh, what happens? <laughs> and and there is actually an explanation for that, right? And the explanation is people plateau. And when you plateau, it is up to you to stress yourself enough to break out of that plateau or to just sit there. So that's why I think sometimes people do 20, 30 years of something and they never gotten past a certain point because they just stop pushing themselves. And I think, I think, well, I think the, I, I know the better you get at something, the harder it gets the more effort it requires to keep improving or even to maintain what you have, whether it's a physical skill or whether it's a mental skill. Now, with mathematics, I'm sure you see it all the time. People go like, oh, yeah, I used to be really good at this, and now I can barely do like a very simple equation you know, because the they, have, they haven't done it. They forgot how to do it, right? Uh, but so, but so, so um, there are no shortcuts in life. If you want to get good at programming and you want to keep improving yourself and you want and you want to stay good at it, you have to write a lot of code. But you can't just write code. You have to write your code and you have to look at it and and be open to criticism either from yourself or from someone else to look at it and go like, "Okay, what is not good about this? And how could I have done this better?" And when somebody tells you something, I I know people especially now it seems people tend to get offended very easily people get offended when, when people ask questions people get offended when they take something a, a certain way people get offended because somebody says something that they think is inappropriate I, I think I think unless somebody calls you out personally you should maybe take a step back and ask yourself well why am I offended by this and sometimes there's good reason to be offended by it and then that's great by all means be offended but sometimes it's just your own interpretation of what you heard or seen. Like when I get feedback from people, especially at work, I, I made a decision for myself or a choice for myself a long time ago to not take anything personal. When somebody says something to me, especially about my code, I don't care if they say it with the best of intentions or with the worst of intentions. All that matters is there is a criticism. Why is there a criticism? Because if they mean to undermine you or if they mean to help you, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is something could have been done better. So take that, understand why that's there, and then try and figure out, well, how can I do this better so next time when I write something like this, that criticism won't apply. There may be something else, but that's okay. I'll deal with that next time. But but don't don't let your ego hurt yourself. <laughs> Be be open minded and be willing to accept that. Hey, you know what? Maybe I thought I was good at it, but maybe I'm not. And the only way to know that is when people give you feedback. You know, don't don't be don't kid yourself or 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 be delusional about things in the sense that oh yeah, I'm the best programmer, or I'm the best musician, or the best at the. No, nobody is the best. There's always someone who's better in some way or shape and and, and various things. So. Just learn, but that's really what it, what what it is all about, right? Um, linked lists, uh, the certain data structures, certain algorithms. Computer science one, computer science two. You go over all these different type of containers. Containers just 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 parts of memory where you can store data in in a certain order or a certain way. They're all there, and I doubt that you're ever going to write a better algorithm that you get with some of the the standard libraries. Right, the, the, the way to implement linked lists or certain other containers or the way certain algorithms are, you're not going to do any better. But that's not the point. The point is not for you to do any better. The point is for you to write it yourself 
So you have an understanding of how it works and you solve the problems that people ran into initially. Because if you can do that, then you know that you're analyzing and solving problems the right way and you can solve any problem, any problem within, within reason. But the point is, do the legwork yourself so you have a better understanding. I've had, I've done a lot of STEM talks and I've talked to a lot of uh, uh, kids when I did the teaching days at school and whatnot. And the most frequent question was, uh, how to become a game developer or how to become a game programmer? And I think if you want to do that, you have to ask yourself a very simple question with a not so simple answer. Or maybe it is a simple answer. I don't know. But write Tetris. Can you do it? Or can't you do it? But here is the kicker. Right? You can or cannot doesn't necessarily mean that you can be a game developer or not. If you can, if you can go all the way through without giving up, then yes, you should go into game development if that's what you choose to do. But if you can't, if you give up somewhere along the way, then please don't go into game development because it doesn't get any easier. It just gets harder. But the reason I bring up Tetris is because it's a game that has all the aspects of game development. It has rendering, it has AI, it has uh, music, it has interface, it has everything that you, would, that you would need in a game. And if you can handle all those things and end up with something that works in some way, and you enjoy the process, then yeah, go for it, man. You're good. Let's let's get you into game development. <laughs>